and it looks like we're live on YouTube. All right. Wow. It's happening. All right. I, okay. I see. It says it says we are live on YouTube now. So this is the real deal. I think that, I think that means. I think we, yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess the first thing to do would be to to test our audio. But uh, oh wait, there's so there's somebody somebody's watching. Maybe if uh, if somebody's somebody's watching, if we can get a verification that you guys, you guys can hear us. Yeah. You can hear us okay? Oh, we're already getting some good questions. All yeah. right. Yeah, baby. All right, let's, uh, let's get this thing started, Jason. Wow. Cool. Well, I guess, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you can't hear us, give us a, give us a chat. Otherwise, we're going to assume everything's okay. Um, hello, and welcome to uh, the live stream q and I'm Jason, and uh, I made the end of the world uh, uh, a quick minute ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm joined here today by a couple buddies. Um, to my left is my buddy Stu. Uh, Stu and I have been friends for a long time, and uh, he was actually there the night that the end of the world was conceived. Wasn't there for the birth, huh? Um, huh. I had other. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. Anyway, um, he was there there the night that we kind of uh, came up with the end of the world, and I'm also joined with my. Uh, my buddy Eli, um, who I haven't known for as long, but who's a good friend of mine um, from college and uh, talented filmmaker, filmmaker, talented writer. So um, he's going to kind of moderate and take questions, and uh, and Stu's going to kind of yeah help to uh, ask ask questions and moderate as well. So hi, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, we got some. Sure do. Oh wait, I, I can't hear nor see a thing. Uh oh. Well. Can can anybody if, confirm? Can can I believe, any, I believe that Selena Persiani Shell has uh, has confirmed that we uh, that, that we're being heard. We're being heard. Okay. So if you I'm can't hear us, if you can, yeah. If you can hear, say, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it seems like we're. Uh, might be it might be people's connections. So. Yeah. Yeah. So if you yeah if you can't hear us, maybe double double check that you've got everything turned up and your headphones plugged in or whatever. Um, all right. Yeah, we've got confirmation. Okay, so Tight. I guess we're gonna go ahead and kick it off. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna kick it over to Stu uh, to, to, <laughs> to to ask me some questions. Oh, oh shit! Uh, <laughs> um, cool. Well, uh, before we get to the audience Q and A, um, just do a little bit of a uh, overview of the origin of the end of the world, the original video, uh, back in 2003. 2003. 2003. We were we were wee ones, um, fresh, fresh out of high school. Um, that, was our, that was our graduation year. It was our graduation year. Uh, we didn't we didn't like people, so we liked uh, hanging out at places that were far away from people in our uh, in our shitty suburban town. And um, the night that we decided to come up with the end of the world, we I think we had previously been talking about uh, different ways that we thought the world would end while hanging out at a closed uh, bakery inside the, the local Safeway. And um, <laughs> we started, uh, you started drawing uh, drawings of uh, missiles and the earth and uh, meteors using rocks on the sidewalk. That, that's right. Yeah, as I recall, we, yeah, I think we, we, we were frequenters of that Safeway, but we'd actually ended up at a park and there was like some, some tan bark or some rocks. And so, yeah, the way the end of the world, the original video was created was, yeah, we were kind of having this discussion about like, are we all going to die? Like what's going on yeah, here? This uh, was uh, this was 2003. And we, we thought back then that the world was going to end at any minute. Um, this was, uh, this was the beginning of the uh, Iraq uh, was o operation Iraqi freedom uh, had just, uh, just kicked into gear. Um, less than two years removed from 9-11. Um, uh, weapons of mass destruction is the headline of the news every single night. Um, so, yeah, we figured, uh, oh, global warming. That term, global warming, is really starting to uh, uh, pick up steam. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going for, on. And for, yeah. for high school, you know, for kids our age, yeah. yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kick it to get to, to the questions. Yeah, um, right. yeah. Just to yeah to kind of finish yeah. finish up that that thought. Yeah. The uh, so anyway, we we had ended up at that park, and there was like rocks or tan bark, and so we were talking about nukes, and yeah, I started drawing like the 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 world on the ground, and 
nukes flying back and forth and and passing each other and that's kind of where the scene that i you know of the nukes like passing each other that was kind of the original genesis of that idea which then the rest of the the original end of the world kind of came came from that original scene of like nukes passing each other so um yeah back brief brief uh end of the world history and uh yeah if we've got a couple questions i'd love to love to take a couple questions yeah we've got one here from uh <clears throat> stephen chu who's been asking uh what have you been doing for all the years in between and why did you decide to return to make a sequel now before we get into that i'd like to kind of like maybe set the stage a little bit more for what was going on at that time um maybe from less from uh, around the politics and the and the current events but um more from a cultural perspective cu cultural perspective uh how uh this was pre youtube right so yeah. like so so tell so tell us a little bit about that about how like people um consumed videos cuz i know a lot of you guys uh uh might be might have been of age at that time maybe some of you weren't uh, but it might be a good refresher on how he actually did things uh, back in the those olden olden days. Yeah, there was this thing called MySpace back then. That was a that was a thing. Uh, I had a a live journal. Anybody mm. live journal? Or a live journal where yeah. I'd post uh, song lyrics and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> um, a blog you had to pay for. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was very different. This was pre YouTube. I think YouTube was two thousand four or two thousand five. Um, so yeah, there was no YouTube. Uh, there were sites that they were curating basically funny, funny internet videos. Not all of them were funny, but predominantly the stuff that people were posting was just like funny, funny videos. And so there were these sites like E Bombs World, Albino Black Sheep. Uh, you know, sites like that that were kind of curating these videos. And so that was the first time when I saw the end of the world on the internet was on, I think, Ebom's World or Albino Black Sheep. Uh, and it had already had a bunch of views. And it was like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. How, how long did it take you to make the original end of the world from that first ideation stage where you were drawing missiles in the dirt to, to, to I don't know, showing it to your friends or whatever? I, I think it was pretty quick. I think it was about a week. I think it was like yeah, wow. like a week or maybe two weeks, and um, yeah, I had kind of been learning Flash at the time. We'll talk about Flash and animation, I'm, I'm sure, but um, yeah, I was kind of dabbling in animation, and so it was uh, yeah, this conversation. I recorded the the video all in one go with very little re you know revision or anything like that. Um, I think I may have may have written down a script uh, or at least a loose script, but then recorded it all in one go, and then pretty much just. Uh, went through and did the visuals for it. Uh, yeah, in, a, in about a week. Wow. Okay. Well, let's. I, I think it's about time to take our first question yeah, from the so audience. Yeah. Get back to. Get yeah. Back to yeah. yeah. There. So, Stephen, um, what have you been doing for all these years in between, and why did you des decide to return to make a sequel now? That's really the heart of it, isn't it? It is a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. The question. It's a great question. Um, well, what have I? What have I been doing? Um, so, in two thousand three, I made the end of the world video. Um, and yeah, uh, the suburban town, the, the quote shitty suburban town Stuart was re referring to uh -oh. uh, is uh, Tra Tracy, California, which, you know, not a, not a shitty town, but it's, it's definitely a suburban, um, sort of a suburban uh, sprawl type, type of place. And so, um, yeah, from there, I moved to Portland, Oregon, where I went to, to film school kind of wanted to get into live action and did for a while, you know, worked in um, kind of live action uh, commercials, directed a, a, like a no budget indie feature. Um, and so was in the live action world for a little while and then kind of ended up back um, in the like motion graphics animation uh, kind of realm. So I do um, motion graphics animation for uh, a company that makes web videos. So I'm still kind of, kind of in the, in the, the general industry, but um, yeah, and then uh, I uh, I got married, and I have two kids. I have two two daughters. One's uh, three, and one's eleven months old. And uh, we were both at that wedding. Yes, yes we were. Yes, mm -hmm. I was the best man. Just, just lovely. You're, you were an okay man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, so that brings us up to to today. Um, and why did I want to make a, a new video? Um, that's yeah. That's that's kind of the question that I've gotten asked a lot. Um, and over the the kind of late 2017, 
uh, or late 2016, 2017, um, I'd been reached out to by a few folks that were just kind of asking like, well, what do you think about what's gonna go, what's going on? Yeah, with, what's your hot take? Yeah. With North Korea, what, you know? Um, and so I was kind of getting questions like that. And I was, I was watching some of the, um, some of the events of uh, 2016, 2017, and the, they were just, they were kind of scary to me. And so um, it, it just kind of seemed like really the first time I had felt like, uh, you know, that maybe something bad could happen, something really bad, or that there were some events that could, you know, potentially lead to a, a bad place. And so, um, yeah, I uh, I eventually decided that I would, I did want to kind of um, kind of touch on some of that stuff, and I was sensitive to it. Um, I didn't. I know that the the original end of the world video is kind of a um, uh, you know as as though I didn't intend it to be is kind of an iconic internet video now, and I didn't want to you know didn't really want to mess with it for a long time. Um, I got to the point where I just um, yeah I was I was kind of interested in in kind of kind of discussing or talking about some of the things that were going on. So yeah. right, we got a question from uh, Andrew Klinger. Andrew wants to ask in regards to your uh, <laughs> in regards to your Final Fantasy 11 videos. Are you guys still gaming online at all? And uh, any history on that series of videos that you did? Dude, nice. Uh, I think he's a uh, I think he mentioned he was a fan. Nice, nice yeah. reference. He loved he loved your old Fantasy. Final Fantasy XI videos. Deep cut. Yeah, deep, deep cut. Wow. Yeah, that's so. Actually, it's a, it's funny. Um, you, you you know maybe you may be able to find me on Facebook if you can. A buddy of mine, um, George Smith, who was also um, who was also there with us the night the end of the world was created. Uh, he incidentally has a really funny YouTube show that he's doing right now called Don't Die, where they eat really hot stuff and then try to talk while uh, while going through that. Anyway, he recently uncovered some of those videos and is posting them to his Facebook right now. So you can actually still find those. But um, wow, yeah, Final Fantasy XI was a, an online video game. One of the, I, I think one of the early like online role playing games where you could create a character in this world. And uh, yeah, George and I made these funny videos with our characters where we took screenshots, it was one of the things you could do in this game. And then we would, in Photoshop, stencil them out and animate them talking to each other. And we did this funny series of videos. Um, no, we do not still play. I don't think. I don't know if George does, but no, we don't still play Final Fantasy XI. And no, unfortunately, um, the Adventures of Finstermiss and Proofrock, which is what it was called, uh, I, I don't think. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything going on with that. But uh, great reference, and I appreciate that you. Uh, I appreciate that you remember those. And one more time, what's the name of George's new YouTube show? So it's it's called Don't Die, and uh, D D N D N T D Y E, and uh, yeah, it's it's really funny. Hey there. Yeah, I wanted to um, I wanted to get back to the original uh, end of the world video and kind of talk about like how it blew up, right? Because I mean, uh, uh, just for to start, you didn't actually even upload it yourself. Right. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, uh, another friend of ours. I think there were four of us. Um, yeah, I kind of made the original end of the world with no real. Um, intention behind it like we were watching we were watching internet videos that we were watching funny videos and stuff but i don't i don't really remember thinking like oh i'm gonna make this video to post online um uh, which seems like uh that i should have but um yeah i i initially made it to, to show you to share with friends yeah. i mean there it was like yeah, it was meant to be shown amongst our friends it was you made it just to make us laugh correct I mean, which I mean, some of the stuff that we were joking about yeah and so I think I think it was a, a yeah this other friend of ours who I I sent it to you guys. He was kind of plugged into some folks like overseas. He was kind of like into the like pirating music and movies kind of thing. And so he sent it to one of his friends who sent it to one you know. And eventually, yeah, I we were trying to remember before this when we actually realized that the video was online or on Ebombs World or, or things like that. And uh, I don't exactly remember when I realized that, but yeah, it made its way online. Kind of independent of of me, and so I wasn't actually connected to it for a long time. I mean, also we spent so much time during this period on Ebombs World watching other videos. I mean that that's how we spent the majority of our time. Um, so to then watch this video that Jay made make its way mysteriously to Ebombs World, I and mean, that was it. It was 
over. Like we could have died happy <laughs> at that point. Like that's all. That was the farthest we could see uh, into the into the forest. Is that a, is that a saying? Is that a phrase? So I mean, yeah that that was a. Uh, that was the greatest thing that in the world that we could imagine at the time. Well, and this was before there there was no intention behind it because there were these videos that yeah people were sharing around they were getting watched but there was no there was no monetization there were yeah. no YouTube was, channels there were no like there was no business plan behind putting a video online and trying to get views or anything it was all just like let's put it online oh yeah people are watching it this is awesome this is a cool way to share stuff and yeah. like, there was no such thing as an internet celebrity. Right. Back yeah. Then. Yet. Um, you were the first. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I nobody knew who I who I was. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, no, nobody knew who any of these people were. Nobody knew who made um, you know, uh, uh, Homestar Runner. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, like people, like some like nerds would know, but like they weren't. Yeah. yeah, they weren't like famous. Badger, badger. Uh, yeah, I mean, badger, 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 badger. badger um, group X. Group X. Like these weren't, uh, they weren't household names necessarily at the time. And you know, the, the identities of these people were not uh, an issue. Like nobody wanted to know like, oh, who made this? Like, Well, and at that time it was also the internet. Um, there was a little bit of a, a, um, a guarded sense of, of uh, revealing who you were completely, having all your contact information because the, it, the, the internet was still, I mean, a lot of the stuff was still fairly new. And so people were a little bit leery of putting all their information out there and who they were and things I like remember, that. I remember being afraid to buy things on the internet because you know you, you could get hacked. Yeah. They could steal your Which steal still your what still happens, but this was before a lot of the security measures were in place for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, people were realizing that the internet was a place where predators could still exist and things yeah. like that. So yeah. So it so you work. <laughs> so you made so you made the uh, so it, it went up. You, your friend put it up mm -hmm. on eBombs World. It ended up on this new website called the YouTube or something along those lines. Uh -huh. um, and uh, is there is there a time? Did did you ever did you ever start? When I guess when did you start getting recognized as the person who made the end of the world animated video? Um, so I, I think it started to happen when there was a, a dude who his name is Jason Sturgill. He was working at Wyden Kennedy, which um, I, I ended up getting a contract for uh, a series of Nike spots based on the end of the world. Um, the they're an ad agency that works with Nike. Yeah, and that was like that was you know I was like 19 years old. It was the first job, like freelance gig, like job that I had gotten, and I was like stoked. Um, but he somehow, because yeah, my name wasn't really connected to it. I didn't post it online. There was no by Jason Windsor on it, and so um, it was just sort of out on the internet. And he threw some internet magic uh, tracked me down. You know, eventually, I think um, my name started to get connected to it, but um, there, it, it just started to be this sort of like, oh yeah, the, that that end of the world video. Oh, I made that video. What you made that video? Like, I, you know, I don't. Nobody knows who made that video, and so yeah, there was there was sort of a transition, and then you know, maybe two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. When it was a little easier to find people on the internet, I think it was a little easier to connect me to it. But um, it was a good, it was a good while. Yeah, it's funny. We met in uh, in film school back in uh, around 2008, I believe, is when we is when we first met. And uh, I had not seen it. I uh, I guess I don't know. I it just just flew flew past me. And a mutual friend of ours showed it to me, and I was like, oh yeah, this is hilarious. Went home uh, that uh, back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Big shout out to T Town. Um, <laughs> went home and was showing my I've got a bunch of brothers and sisters and brother-in-laws and, and all this sort of thing was showing it to all my all my family and my brother-in-law just flipped out absolutely he was like oh my god you know this guy like like and and he and ever since every time someone will say they'll be like oh I'm the tired I'm like oh that's my buddy who made that and then they just they just absolutely flip out and Stu has that ever has ever happened to you yeah I remember seeing a band at uh, this venue in San Francisco, bottom of the hill. Um, There's this band called Delphi. And after the show, I was just kind of hanging around and I heard one of the guys in the band say a line from the original video. Uh, I don't remember what line it was, but it was, you know, something like, well, uh, but I'm later. And, yeah. and, 
I mean, yeah, he was like, yeah, fast as hell. And then all of his, you know, him and all of his stupid friend bandmates, well, not stupid, uh, were like, like oh. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, being uh, like a teenager still at the time, just kind of slithered over there and was like, oh, I, uh, I heard you reference the uh, end of the world. Like, yeah, the video is fucking funny. And I was just like, oh, my, uh, my best friend uh, actually made that video. And he's like, what? That's fucking amazing. Oh, great. And he like made me take a photo with him. And I'm like, I'm not even the guy. <laughs> I'm not even the guy who made it. I just said, like, it was my friend. And this guy is flipping his shit. Um, so I, 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 I always imagine it was the, 10 times more intense for you. Well, it, it, it's by far the craziest thing when, yeah, when somebody, just cause, because I didn't really intend for it to go anywhere, when somebody that I don't know from a different part of the world says, uh, wow, I, I, I love that. You know, it's, it's just, yeah, it's really cool to, for, to experience that and I'm stoked that uh, yeah that so many people like the original video <laughs> <laughs> Jim B thank you so much for uh, for your notes on our audio we can't monitor what we're doing here so uh, let me know let us know if you guys have any uh, notes on how close to get the microphone or not okay right um, <laughs> but uh, yes yeah, so <clears throat> Andrew Klinger says uh, I know you guys moved on with family career, but do you play with new videos and content now I'm super stoked to see you guys after so long. I'm a huge fan, dude. Thank you so much, Andrew. That's really nice. What do you What do yeah. you think, Jason? Are you gonna make some more stuff? Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks, Andrew, um, and thank you for the support. Yeah, I I actually hope to um, in the coming months. Uh, I'm currently writing um, uh, what I what I hope to be kind of short short content unpacking kind of some you know both current events, political, non political. Um, just kind of some stuff that there's confusion around that needs explanation that we need to be able to laugh about. Um, yeah, I hope to, um, in the, in the coming months, kind of get that going. Most likely it'll be, it'll be on this, you know, the same YouTube channel. If not, obviously I'll, um, you know, pr make, make sure that the, the information get, gets out. But yeah, I, uh, I, I do want to make more, more stuff kind of in this vein. I think there's, uh, there's, there's room for it. I think some, uh, you know, educational material that's kind of stripped back and just uh, funny and simple um, can could be really cool. And so I, uh, I hope to to keep making some stuff coming up here. So um, we're gonna get into the new end of the world animation here in a moment. I want to stick around on the old one for just a little bit longer. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that anybody who has subscribed on YouTube or is following us on Facebook or whatever uh, has seen the new end of the world animation and they might have looked through the comments you know youtube comments section is really just it's kind of the peak of uh of just literate um discussion you know it's uh it's really our our highest institution is the uh youtube comments section um so you, you guys have probably seen some of the some of the negativity that's uh that's that's surrounded the the old one or the new one um i wonder was there did you have this sort of reaction to uh, to the old one was what was was it was it generally positive was it was it half and half how did how did that kind of go down for you? Yeah, it's been really interesting to watch the 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 new one because yeah no the the original video I think by and large um, there you know there wasn't anything that leaned too too heavy like politically and so yeah a lot of I think in in general the response to the original video was that yeah it was pretty funny yeah um, and uh, yeah, comparatively, uh, the new video, you know, I think uh, kind of kind of like I expected. Um, yeah, there's kind of a split reaction because we're we're split right now, um, or a lot of a lot of us are, and so um, because it kind of kind of tends to lean to to. Although I I I, you know, yeah, it tends it tends to lean to to one side a little bit. The the the. <laughs> And the reaction's been a little bit more more split on this one, but well, like you know, like I said, the YouTube comment section just our our highest, um, you know, highest discussion. <laughs> level. Well, you can say pretty much whatever you want there. So yeah, you it's know, true. it's true. Yeah. Okay, so um, we, 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 had a, we have a technical question that Matthew Carell has tried asking a couple of times, uh, but. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, not Matthew. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to you, Matthew Carell. Thomas Smith wants to know. Did you put your original animation on Newgrounds mm. back in the day before YouTube was what it is now? Yeah, New New. That's actually a good. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't thought about Newgrounds. Newgrounds was another one that was around back then. I believe it was on Newgrounds. Again, I I didn't. Um, sorry about that. Again, I didn't put it on. Um, 
you know, if, if it didn't make its way on, I think it did make its way on there. I do feel like I, I remember seeing it on there, but um, yeah, again, I didn't actually, I didn't actually put it on. There was, there was a period of time, maybe, maybe like 2006 or 2008 when I thought like, I, I need to, I need to get this back and I need to put my name on it and I'll put it back at, but then, you know, I don't know. It just kind of belongs to the internet now. And after that point, I just kind of, I didn't feel like, I don't know. I just felt like it would have been trying too hard to kind of like try and take it back. And so, yeah, I just kind of, kind of let it, let it, let it go. Let it be. <laughs> Matthew Krill says he likes our shirts. Thanks. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great shirt too. I was, I, yeah, I'm going to plug the shirts at the end. Yeah. For, um, for those of you that ever, ever just wish you had something on it that said that you were late tired, <laughs> you can now get that thing, uh, <laughs> because I'm selling shirts. <laughs> because capitalism. Because, because capitalism. capitalism. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't monetize, you know, I didn't get any monetization from the first one. Is it, is it okay that I, uh, you know, I think it's absolutely um, fine. No, and I think, yeah, it, it, and that is one way that you can support me if you do want to see, you know, future content, obviously, uh, I gotta, you know, gotta gotta pay the bills. So yeah, there's a a, a, a store and it is online now. It, uh, and I'm I'm hopefully gonna get a, a URL for it. But right now it's gumroad.com/slash hokey apparel. And if you go there, you can find some uh, end of the world related swag. And if you buy it, I get a cut, and uh, it helps me to continue to do what I do. So and I'll probably plug that again at the end too. So <laughs> so here we are, 15 years later. You drop End of the World probably for real this time on January 20th, 2018. Mm -hmm. The one year anniversary of Donald Trump's inauguration. Mm -hmm. Was that a coincidence? <laughs> I didn't realize it was the same day. Mm. My bad. Um, no, yeah, that was that was that was the in, the intent. Yeah, certainly. Um, one of the some of the or maybe some of the the feedback that I've gotten or some of the more prominent feedback that I've gotten on the video is the new video is that it's too political. It's just too, too there's political, too political guys. Yeah. Come on. Too well, political. and and in that that defense, like aren't we like we're all a little bit tired, right? We're all tired a little bit of, I'm of very tired. all the yeah. Um, and so you know, I can see if you're not like really kind of plugged into that stuff that it's just like ah, it's more. It's more Donald Trump and people that don't like Donald Trump. And so, you know, I, yeah, I can definitely, I respect that. I can, you know, I respect that. Um, you know, that, that said, um, I think it's a little hard to unknit the politics from, from this stuff right now. And it is, you know, everything is very political, very divided. What I, um, although I certainly have my own, um, my own beliefs and, and the, um, stuff that's important to me, my family, and my community that I do touch on in this video. What I was hoping to also get across was kind of that um, that this administration, you know, though though we are kind of divided, and we're kind of being forced to to be divided, that this administration is really actually bad for both of us and um, for both sides, even though it may not seem like it is right now. Um, that was one of the things that I kind of wanted to touch on, and and so. Yeah, I, I dropped it on that date, I guess, because um, the politics are kind of uh, could could cause the end of the world. I think you know right now. I think the uh, there's enough stuff that's going on that's really you know it's kind of scary and detrimental to our uh, our long term survival that the politics are just are um, are a part of. And so yeah, this one ended up a little bit more kind of political, I think, than the last one. But I think that's that's kind of where we are. Yeah, uh, Jim B. Uh, thank you so much for your for your fantastic comment. Comment nowadays, if you sneeze the wrong way, it's a political issue. Mm -hmm. And, and that's I, true. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of what you're speaking to here, right? I mean, it's 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 hard to separate the politics from everyday life. You know, everything that happens seems to have some sort of uh, political slant to it. Um, what so do you have i guess you have a favorite comment do you have a uh, do you have a do you have a take on like what you how you feel about the folks who say it's more it's too political be more politically involved oh <laughs> uh, snap um, no yeah jason just came real oh, um, <laughs> no i mean the stuff it's it's important it is it's it's really important um i i think it is um i 
Yeah, I, I I don't know. I like I said, I can I can respect that it's just like we can be a little bit weary of it, and I think it's it's hard too because to Jim's point, um, it can seem like when when things happen that one side will will what and what we call politicize it, which means that they're going to take it and they're going to you know use it for their gain somehow. I think the thing that uh, maybe in the media gets lost and that we forget is that it you know what it comes back to is that this is stuff that's important to people important to their communities and their families and you know whether we think that they're brainwashed or not by whoever um it you know this this is stuff that's important to them and so politicizing it that's you know that's a term we can use but if that's something that's important to somebody they're going to want to talk about it and so uh, you know that and that's there's a lot of stuff being talked about right now Fascinating stuff. Uh, Peter <laughs> Peter Raber wants to know. Oh, hey, Pete. Oh, all right. Hey, buddy. Uh, yo, Pete. Uh, Pete wants to know if we're going to see a major motion picture. Now, I would refer to that as a film, but <laughs> for you, I guess we'd call it a movie. Yeah. A uh, major so. motion picture. Un unbeknownst to maybe some other viewers, Peter Raber and I have actually had a discussion about this uh, in the past about an, an end of the world feature, which I think would be awesome. And I want to, to work on something like that. Yeah, we, uh, Peter and I, um, yeah, Pete's a, a good friend. He lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. And we were discussing one day uh, outside in the cold what it would be like uh, if uh, an end of the world feature you know, feature film came about and what that could be. I think it could be awesome. And uh, there's uh, currently currently nothing like that in the works. But uh, but you never know what uh, what what could could happen. Anybody out there on the uh, Q and A works for uh, Paramount Pictures or Spielberg, Netflix? Yeah. Um, Amazon. Let us know. Amazon Prime. Think uh, think day I mean, after. We'll even do Crackle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> think think day after tomorrow. But instead of just like. What was there in the waves, mm -hmm. earthquakes? There's also there's gonna be nukes. There's gonna be meteors. There's gonna be uh, I don't know locusts, robots. French uh, people. Yeah, the French. There's gonna be laughs. There's gonna be laughs. There's gonna, be, laughs. There's gonna, gonna be, be some good times. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think most of all. So, so um, we've got we've got a really great question here from uh, the real Kim Possible. Um, and so the real Kim Possible asks, do you believe that the next generation will help with the problems of now or make them worse? And I just want to add on to this, you know, um, uh, you now have two children. I have one of my own, you know, and so that is, that is something, uh, as, as fathers, I know we both think about, uh, quite a bit is, is how the sort of the world we are handing to our children, how they're going to take it, you know, with the, with this, with what's happened in Florida and seeing these kids, you know, really start to, to motivate. What are your, you know, what are your kind of your thoughts around that? Like, how do you see uh, the next generation um, adapting to these, to these issues? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think they absolutely will. I think they, you know, what, what we will see when we're old people and our kids have grandkids, I think will, will blow our minds. Um, and, I think right now it can be a little bit hard to see the forest through the trees. There's, it, you know, I think it's a little hard that's to. The well, yeah, <laughs> that's the same. Yeah, um, it's. It can feel a little hopeless, right? There's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on from a lot of different angles, and we're here. You know, uh, one side says, "Oh, we need to do this." The other side, "Oh, but like, but family, and we need to be teaching our kids and all of you know." Um, yeah, that's. Um, that's a that's a really good question, and I think um, I, you know, I think there's evidence to suggest that it could go either way. You know, that maybe uh, <laughs> uh, it could end up really bad for for us or something like that. And that's part of the reason that I made this new video is that uh, if we continue to dump stuff into our water, if we continue to do stuff the way that we're doing, the, uh, the people that are in charge of uh, of warning us about this stuff are warning us about this stuff. And so if we don't kind of um, start to listen to those people uh i i do think it could you know it, it could be a, a bummer for future generations and and so i i'm gonna continue to be active in that regard and when i think about my my kids and what i want to offer to them um yeah i i hope it's that um 
you know, to, well, I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of things, but um, that I can help them to, uh, to regulate their emotions so that when they go out into the world and um, see things that make them scared, make them angry, make them frustrated, that they don't need to feel like they need to pick up a gun or tweet uh, about it um, or, or jump on, jump online. Um, that you too. <laughs> just got really real. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I think there, there are definitely a lot of things that we do need to, to teach our kids to help our kids. I think there are a lot of ways that our society does, uh, not help families to, to be together. I mean, all these things that we, I think innately know, um, but, uh, then, you know, I, I think, yeah, um, sorry, that's a, that's a really meandering question, but I think the long and short of it is that I, I think our kids are, are going to be okay. I do think we, there, there are things that we need to do to, to help them though. And just, and just to kind of finish up this final thought, um, I would, I, I, I totally agree with everything you said there. And I just wanted to add, you know, my, uh, my parents, my, my father thought that I was, our generation was going to be the one to solve racism, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so that isn't to say, uh, you know, that it's hopeless that, it, but, um, I think that all that we, if we put our, all of our hopes in the next generation, that sort of, um, we're sort of, uh, taking, like not taking responsibility for, for our actions today. And we need to make sure that we're, that we are actively trying to make the world a better place for the next generation so yeah. they can make it a better place for the next generation. Yeah. And, and, and I think we will, I think we will definitely see that happen, but yeah, it does, it does take work. And I think what we're seeing now is that we kind of like, you know, maybe the last eight years on the, yeah, the, like the, then the new video, the political kind of spectrum where the last eight years, maybe we kind of swung over this way. We're now kind of swinging way back over the, the other way maybe, but, um, that's, you know, it's not just going to stay over here. You know, it's going to, um, it's going to naturally, I think, come back the, the, there's a phrase that I really like called no mud, no lotus. And what that means is that you can't have beautiful things without some, uh, some, you, you know, without, you can't have a beautiful flower without the compost. You can't have, um, really beautiful things without some, you know, going through some shit first. And so I think we're going through some shit now, but I think, um, you know, I think we're going to be okay. At least I'm hopeful. Yeah. That question is a good lead into uh, the next question uh, from Andrew Klinger. Given that uh, you grew up during the time of Columbine, how do you feel about the resurgence of the gaming? <laughs> how do we, how do you feel about the resurgence of the gaming causing violence, uh, scapegoating going on, and gun violence in general? Yeah. So, um, I mean that that's a that's a pretty cool question right now, given what happened last week mm -hmm. in. Uh, in Parkland, Florida, um, and then taking us into just this past week with a lot of those uh, who survived that shooting uh, getting very active with uh, promoting uh, changes with gun laws and getting the uh, really cool town hall uh, special on CNN where they went face to face with Marco Rubio yeah. and uh, Dana Loesch from the, uh, the NRA. Um, so you know, the question was, how do you feel about uh, you know, the resurgence of violence in video games and scapegoating and all that? I mean, that was a big thing when we were kids. Yeah. Uh, it was video games are too violent and they're yeah. turning our kids violent. Yeah, Marilyn Manson and um, the music that we're listening to and that stuff that's like, yeah. And, and so, you know, like I said, uh, you know, this, again, this could be a little bit touchy because um, we, I, we tend to feel like we need to go one way or the other and completely what i think what what trump was saying in the last couple of days was kind of along the lines of like you know this is like family stuff this is the movies that we're watching these are the violent things that we have you know it's um which to which i'll say on the one hand yeah do, do i believe that um there are forms of media that um what i would call what i would say water good seeds in us versus watering um you know, maybe some discontent, violent, you know, things like that. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that is true. And if, you know, if we only watched nice stuff all the time, would we maybe feel a little bit differently? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe that, you know, that is true. I think violent video games exist everywhere in the world, including countries where we don't see gun violence like this. Yep. Um, yep. And including violent media and stuff like this. I, as somebody who is uh, I, a nonviolent, 
pacifist, non-gun owning person. I still like violent video games. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm playing Far Cry 4 right now, and it's awesome. And uh, you know, um, I, I don't think that there's yeah the the one thing that we can point to that's like, well, this is what's causing it. Do I think family stuff has to do with it? Yeah, probably. I think there are a lot of policies that, um, you know, again, on, on one side tend to force uh, poor families, poor um, parents to have to work a lot in order to get any aid. It keeps them away from their family. You know, that there, there are things like that in place that, um, that, yeah, that I think do affect our ability to just um, be with our families and hang out with our kids and talk to our kids and be present for our kids and, um, and societal issues and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I do think that. Uh, I also think we should not have any automatic weapons and that if we don't have, you know, a, 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 we can go back and forth on this argument a lot, but if the guns aren't there, I, I don't think that it will be an issue. And I think you can look at other places in the world where they just, they've let that go. They've let their guns go the way we haven't and we and you don't see violence the way you do and you don't see people dying the way um, the way you do in this country. And so, um, yeah, I think there are multiple, there are multiple things going on there. Um, I think we also need really strict gun laws. So. No guns in the, has the I do, I do a little bit. But no actual uh, I don't think so. Progress, maybe. maybe a little bit, baby steps. So we got some, we got some more questions from the uh, from the audience. Okay. Um, and and if you guys, uh, if we do not get to your question, please ask it again, um, because some of your questions are getting re re redacted or retracted, as it were. Um, Thomas Smith was asking about uh, it's. It looks like it's been retracted. Something about Thomas Fulp on Newgrounds. Mm. Um, do you do you know do you know anything about 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 him? Have you seen the animation? Um, uh, I don't think so. I'd have well, to... yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you want to, Thomas oh. Smith, if you want to, if you want to get back and answer that, ask us that question again. We're happy to uh, to get back it was, to it. Yeah. Something about Thomas Fulp. Something about Thomas Fulp. Yeah, I'll see if I can check it out real quick. But uh, um, otherwise, yeah, we'll come back to it. Uh, Stephen Chu asks on a lighter note, on the merch side, can we get some of those? Okay, so here's the Earth shirts. You gonna make something like that? You have something like that? You know, I don't think I have anything like that right now. Um, but uh, that's that's a good just like with the earth on it. That's a good that's a good idea. I think yeah. so. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of uh, got a bunch of uh, I'm like I'm like tired stuff. Uh, some stuff with uh, pictures of the original for the ladies. I've got some leggings um, and a few other cool things. I'm actually working on some hats right now too. So um, yeah, there's some cool stuff up there. But uh, the 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 good old earth on there yeah, is a good, good one too. And I actually am in the next month. I'm going to be working on it's all kind of stuff from the old video right now. But I'm going to work on a line of stuff from the the that has stuff from the new video too. So that'll be coming. The the real Kim Possible asks, do you think that the evolution of the next generation, such as gender evaluation and uh, acceptance, is going to help with all of the problems in the world today? All of the problems. Uh, I mean, I, I hope so. I, I think if we can get to a point where we can be yeah less a little less prescriptive of for you know stuff like that of what other people are are doing that doesn't have an effect on us i think that will be great for for everyone you know i i um yeah i i think that those communities um it it's it sucks that those communities are marginalized it sucks that those communities um you know for yeah reasons that you can agree with or disagree with um yeah are don't have the don't have the rights that that other people have. I think everybody deserves to be happy and safe. And uh, and yeah, I I fully support you know just in general us being accepting of people and being able to make those people feel safe. And if people in the world feel good, we will see less bad stuff. If people in the world feel scared, angry, uh, you know, uh, and yeah, marginalized, then we're gonna see violence drugs we're gonna see all the you know all the things that we know come come from stuff like that so uh we got a question on facebook yeah, yeah. i'm not sure if it's quite a question but i'll read it uh joshua hat says hi, hi, no, hat, no, hat. hi. uh joshua hat says 
it is important for end of the world to come back during this current political time in history. Uh, he also feels the same for Rage Against the Machine. Yes. Uh, yes. It'd be such an important time for them to come back together. Uh, that way, we all have a collective focus on resistance. Um, I believe Rage does. They, they're not quite uh, a cohesive unit all the time Zach but De La Rocha is just, they, he's doing his own thing man zach does his thing um you know the other guys were playing with uh, uh chris cornell and audio slave chris cornell unfortunately uh passed away last year rest in peace yeah. but um as far as i could tell i think rage rage never officially um well they came back around like what 2007 they they come back every now and then to play shows mm -hmm. um yeah uh they have gone on record to say that they won't um create any new music anytime soon mm -hmm. um but that's because they feel that their old songs are still just as relevant today if not more than when they, they put are. them out back in the day so when they when they go up there and they play songs like bulls on parade and gorilla radio it's like those are those could be applicable to anything Absolutely. going on today incidentally rage against the machine and and a few others but rage against the machine was a huge influence on i know you but me and well. yeah. yeah and that was that was actually rage against the machine was one of the first you know whether you like the sound of rage against the machine or not that was it was one of the first times that i had heard music that just like was so outside of like like the paradigm that i was in listening to i don't know stuff my dad led zeppelin and like stuff that my dad listened to and my mom listened to and um to hear Rage Against the Machine, it was like, it just, it blew my mind and it kind of opened my eyes. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, politically a little bit too, but um, just the, yeah, of uh, different different music, different opinions. And, and and we're getting pretty far afield from the end of the end of the world. <laughs> and we need to get back to it, but I just do want to say, uh, Zach De La Rocha does a, does a song uh, with Killer Mike. Um, uh, and that is, that is just so, so good. It's called Run the Jewels, I guess, is the, is the name of the band. Run, right the, on. Run the Jewels with uh, featuring Zach De La Rocha. It is incredible. Go check it out. It's a really good song. Uh, back to End of the World <laughs> animation. Um, what, what uh, the, getting back into sort of the politics of it, you've gotten a lot of, uh, of flack from it. I noticed that, like, on a, on a pure you know, thumbs up, thumbs down um, ratio. It definitely seems it's about two thirds up and one third down. I got the popular vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, two million. Two, two, two million. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about the electoral, but I got the popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how how does it feel to? Do you ever read through the comments? Do you ever do you ever take all that in? I know that I have. I've read through the comments and I just get so angry and mm -hmm. I didn't even make this thing. So how how is that for you? Yeah. Um, uh, I I did have to stop reading them for a little bit. I definitely had to turn off the the notifications because otherwise they'll just pop up. And it's like what a piece of shit, <laughs> and it just while pops up. It's like oh, baby. I know. <laughs> I was just trying to make coffee this morning. Um, yeah. Um, no, and I I mean I I kind of expected it. I did expect it again. Like I like I said um, because I you know it expresses uh, opinions that are you know viewpoints that are important to me and my family and my community um it takes one side and so um yeah it, it also you know obviously people who are not kind of in that sphere it, it upset people and um yeah uh, and i think um initially i was a little bit like just disappointed that i um that it didn't because of that stuff that people weren't able to get through to the message of like Man, uh, it seems like we need to be split on this stuff, and that we want different things when actually we we actually don't. We, you know, one side thinks we need guns, the other side doesn't. We all just want to be safe, though, right? We just want to be safe and raise our families and uh, you know be able to live the lives that we want. That's what we we all want. There are just different ideas about how to to do that, and so. Yeah, actually, about the uh, for about a week after I released the video, I had about a week long panic attack where I was trying to, uh, re you know, reconcile this stuff and like ah, maybe I did the wrong thing. And and ultimately, I came back to like you know what um, that I I I I didn't. I made something that that's important to me and I believe is important for the world, regardless of uh, of political uh, you know which, which side you lean politically. I do think that. Um, I'm of the opinion that although, yeah, we um, 
it doesn't seem like it that the current administration is actually bad for both sides, whether you're red or blue. Um, it's it's ultimately not good for either of us, even though it seems like it is good for one side. And 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 that's part of the reason that I think it's bad because it is only good for one side. And what we've seen from you know more recently and for the last you know for the last few years is that if we go to just one side and forget about another side, that bad stuff happens. And so right now we're in this kind of um, we're in this kind of back and forth, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I stand by it, and I think that, um, I hope that, uh, you know, I hope that, I hope that some, you know, uh, yeah, I hope some folks come around and, um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's like, like, you know, like everybody knows, YouTube comments are the, are the worst, you know, like that's the dregs of society, you know, and they can just say whatever they want, you know, and no one gets on YouTube to comment about how much they love a video, you know? So there's Although a lot I have, right I have, <laughs> I, and I have gotten some just um, lovely comments talking about how, uh, how much people appreciate it and, and things like that. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate those too. Jim, Jim B asks, uh, have you ever gotten threats for your political, uh, political opinion, either in life or on, or for your videos? You know, I don't think in real life I, I have. No, I think I'm fortunate enough that I haven't had that. I just, I can't imagine these kids, um, what these kids having to go through um, something so, and I'm talking about Florida, the kids that having to go through something so difficult. And then when they try to do something about it to get threatened on yeah. top of that, I just can't by, really. By politicians. By, by yeah. career politicians. Can't really. But I'm fortunate enough that no, I don't, I haven't had to, to deal with that, there were all, there were certain topics in the new video that I didn't that I didn't touch um, for for that reason. Um, you know, like um, I mean, MS thirteen. There's some things that um, bad bad things do happen, but no, I haven't. I think uh, maybe a few YouTube comments that uh, uh, I probably deleted that when you know when they get to to that point, but um, nothing really 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 bad. No, mostly just. Uh, no, that I'm just a, a liberal that's been lost to the uh, brainwashed by the the liberal side somehow. I've been lost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thomas Smith uh, has got a question around the FCC and network freedom. He's in mm. New Zealand, yeah. um, and and he's you know this, this he kind of ends with this ain't China. And I guess it's uh, I guess we're I guess we're kind of talking about net neutrality. Do you have any thoughts around net neutrality? Yeah. I mean, oh it's, yeah, it's a, it's it's a complicated topic, you know, um, and it's not something you really touched on in End of the World. But since we've got you here, do you like what are you what are your thoughts? That was actually one something that I I edited out at the end of the world because it doesn't it didn't. Um, although I think it could be you know potentially argued that it has. Uh, survival implications of our ability to communicate with each other and not be controlled by big corporate, you know, maybe, maybe there's something there, but I, I didn't touch on that. No. However, um, something that made the end of the original end of the world, what it is and the internet, what it is, is that, um, we could just kind of share stuff, um, on the internet and there, there wasn't one, um, or at least there shouldn't have been one entity that controls who can see what we see that happen in other countries and it's like what that's like yeah. that's messed up that in you know in you know whatever in china that they can't see they can't get to parts of the internet because the government doesn't want them to that's i i, I think that's that does encroach on our freedom and i think that's messed up and um yeah our our good friend ajit pai at, at the the head of the um uh, FCC. I know you're watching, Energy. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Although I think he's he's uh, he's in some hot water. Not surprisingly, about and I can't remember exactly what now. But um, yeah, uh, there's been a big push against net neutrality. And again, it's um, there's kind of a narrative that it's gonna um, you know help these companies to offer better services and stuff like that. When ultimately, that's um, that's um, that's that's bullshit. And I, you know. We'll see these messages from Comcast and things like we pledge to never, you know, flex your speed or anything. And it's like, well, all, all due respect, Com Comcast, you know, you're going to have to forgive us if we don't take you at your word, because I think we, we see over and over again that when large companies are not are not regulated in some way like that, that they do take advantage. It happens time and time again. And so um I think net neutrality is very important, and I think it is, uh, it's a threat to, to us, to our ability to create stuff, 
our ability to be able to watch Netflix whenever we want, um, to, to, yeah, to, to not have that freedom. And I think any argument, I, I think any argument against that is, is coming from somewhere else. It's not coming from, um, from with folks like you and me and me in mind. We got a, a question on Facebook from Tyler Lynch. Um, it's kind of a long one. I'm just going to breeze through it. Yeah, he loves the humor. Uh, he says it opens up a dialogue as long as people don't have the us versus them mentality. Uh, personally, uh, you can tell uh, that you have a different perspective than him, uh, but he still laughs because of how, uh, because of intellectual integrity, oh, because you throw intellectual integrity out the window. Um, if uh, <laughs> he was hoping you would uh, bash some uh, Antifa. <laughs> can, I just, can, I, can I just hop in there uh, before before you say anything? Uh, I just want to say uh, Antifa stands for anti-fascist. No, uh, I, yeah, and, and I feel like why are we not all anti-fascist? That- well, so we we should all be anti-fascist, of course. <laughs> uh, Antifa, yeah, I think they, um, yeah, on the conservative side, they can be, I think, kind of like our. I don't know what like the God way, hates fag. The way or, that we view uh, the alt right, yeah. yeah, that's the intensity and uh, finger pointing that they like to give uh, Antifa. Yeah, and I think you can point to things that Antifa has done that, um, you know, whether or not they had the right intention, the right heart behind it, maybe cause harm to people. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a touchy subject. Dude, Tyler, I appreciate that you, um, yeah, that you can come from another side and say like, Hey man, you know, the, I don't, I don't agree with all this. I'm sure you have reasons that are just as intelligent as me to, to back those up and that, um, that you're here having a discussion with us, I think is awesome. Um, so I mean, I, I think we need more folks like that because, um, yeah, I, I, I think initially a video like the end of the world can turn a lot of those folks off just immediately. As soon as it starts bashing Trump, it's like, well, God, I don't want to, you know, I don't yeah. want to deal with this. And I, I love that we that we've got some some folks watching who are not straight West Coast liberals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's, that's yeah. fantastic. And so what I will say, Tyler, is that I am out there at women's marches. I'm out there at a lot of these marches. Um, I haven't been to an Antifa event. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of people who march for progress who are not, uh, I don't know, causing violence or whatever it is that Antifa is doing. You know, yeah. punching, punching old ladies or whatever. Yeah. Well, and I think I, you know, again, it's the you know, I think of the the uh, you know the the balance kind of you know, just as though as if the alt right is is too you know, it's too far. You know, it's too far on this side for a good portion of the country. Antifa, you know. Again, whether or not their hearts are in the right place, uh, can can maybe be causing some damage too. So, yeah. Okay, so we've got two minutes here. Um, so we've got to kind of wrap this up. Um, we've got a great question from Selena Persiani. Shell, uh, what's next for you and end of the world? And I just have one last uh, request for you: is please plug the the merch one more time because I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks, Selena. Um, I, yeah, like I, I said a little bit ago, I really hope to be able to continue to produce some content, um, trying to figure out a little bit of like, how do I make this sustainable? I've kind of got the, the day job thing. And so I want to do this also. And so I'm, you know, kind of considering like, do I do a Patreon? Do I do that sort of thing? I think to start off with, uh, I'm going to pitch around a little bit, but then, um, yeah, like Eli just mentioned, uh, merch, you can go to the, the website is, uh, gumroad.com slash hokey apparel. Um, and I think at this point you can probably Google hokey apparel and, and something will come up. You can also find it if you go to end of Z world, 2018.com, there's a link from, um, from there too. So yeah, I get a cut from merch sales. So, um, anything you buy definitely helps to, to support, but, um, yeah, I really want to, um, I want to continue to produce some short content in the same vein as the end of the world that kind of unpacks, you know, some of the topics that that I touch on that I just didn't have a chance to um, to dive into so much. You know, the EPA, what's happening at the EPA, I think, is so detrimental to our our health 
and uh, I could talk about it forever. And so, um, why, like, what, what is the EPA? What does it actually do for us? Why should we be paying our tax dollars for it? And what, what is it doing with those tax dollars right now that it should be doing better? You know, these are kind of things that I, I want to kind of talk about because I think they're, again, I don't think the news is fake, but I do think that the media can, um, can kind of skew things. And obviously, depending on what sphere you're in, you're going to see a lot of uh, one side of one story versus, uh, you know, an, another side. And so I kind of want, want to unpack um, kind of what's going on on both so those sides and how some of these things came to came to be. So um, that, yeah, stay stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, Buy some shirts, and um, yeah, I hope to hope to to continue to to make some stuff for you. And we can we can hang out for a couple more minutes. Okay. Um, uh, Jim B asks, uh, his mother absolutely loved your videos since uh, he showed it to her ten years ago. She constantly quotes your video and still laughs her ass off to this day. Can you give her a shout out? Can you give a Jim B's mom a shout out? Dude, she was just diagnosed with cancer, yeah. so it would oh really my gosh. put a smile on her face. Well, Jim Jim B. Um, Thank you so much for saying that, and for your mom. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that um, that she's in that situation. That's really that's really tough. And um, but yeah, like I said earlier, it really. Name is Jennifer, by the way. Um, well, Jennifer, thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, I'm so happy that I made you laugh, and uh, I hope to continue to make you laugh. And I. Um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's just like one of the coolest things about all of this is that, yeah, I just, and somehow millions of people have seen it. And when I hear it's, yeah, it's just, it's beyond awesome to hear folks that I don't know uh, sharing stories like that. Like, hey, this is a video that I really liked and uh, it made me laugh. And ultimately, um, yeah, we need some more more laughter, I think, and um, we need to be able to laugh about this stuff. And so, um, Jim B's mom, Jennifer, I uh, I'm I'm thinking about you and I'm rooting for you. And thanks so much for watching my video, and I'm glad you liked it. He's gonna he's gonna cut this clip out and show it to her. So he wants to know if that's cool with you. Dude, Jim, yeah, do it up, man. Thanks thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing this with us. Really appreciate you being here. Stay strong, Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer, man, we're, we're thinking about you. Alrighty. Well, I think that about wraps it up for today. Um, Jason, you are a talented man. You're the, one of the funniest people I know, one of the greatest people I know. Uh, that being said, you're still a sellout liberal cuck. Uh, and um, I, <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I hope we can uh, hope we can talk about this uh, maybe another fifteen years with uh, End of the World Part Three, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff in between. Yeah, thank you guys for Comment? being here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank thank you guys for uh, for being here. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, this has been great. I think we uh, I think we had a really great conversation. There's been some really cool stuff. I learned some stuff. This is some of this stuff was really new to me. So um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much, everybody. Right on. All right, now we're gonna lean in and we're gonna do this one. stop the broadcast. <laughs>